Hi everyone. So over the course of this tutorial, uh, I'm going to be making a uh, hydroponic system, designing it in Fusion 360. The first part is going to be just designing the base, which is a fairly basic part. Then we're going to move to assembling it. And finally, we're going to um, see if it needs any improvements. And in that third step, we'll make any improvements if they're needed. So we're going to just go right into it. You can show this data panel up in the top left. You can press show data panel and you can create a new project. Um, if you just go home and you click a uh, new project uh, up here, you can create a new project. I already have a project open, so I'm just going to use it. So I'm going to quit this. Now, the first thing you want to check whenever you go and you're about to design anything is you want to check your document settings, make sure they're all correct. So you can just put this little drop down menu and it says the units are in millimeters. So that's exactly what we want to use. So that's good. So also if you click this little drop down, you can see that there's these views. There's the top view. So if you click it, it'll go to the top view, front view, right view, and home view. So you can see that it's switching views because of this little cube in the top right corner it has all the views labeled and with the axes also labeled. So if we turn on the origin just by pressing the little I here, we can see the origin of uh, this like Cartesian plane. So if you hold shift and you click your mouse uh, wheel and then drag, you can actually just rotate around. So we're gonna be using that a lot. If you just click your mouse and drag, you actually just move it over. So I'm going to be using that a lot. So I thought I'd just tell you right off the bat. Okay, so let's jump right into our first sketch. So to create a sketch, you can either select a plane and right click and then press create sketch. Or in this create tab has a lot of functions. Create sketch is the first one right here. So you can press create sketch. And now you have to select your plane. We're going to select the top plane. And then here we go. Now we're in our sketch tab. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a big rectangle. Now we want this to be as big as possible, uh, as big as we possibly can because my 3D printer is pretty small and I measured the extremities and it's about 190 millimeters by 190 millimeters by 190 millimeters. So it's just uh, a big cube. So it's good to know our extremities. We're going to create a rectangle on this plane. So how can we do that? As you can see, this rectangle is a two-point rectangle. So if you click that and then press on the center, the origin, you get this rectangle uh, created with two points. We don't actually want that because we want everything to be centered around the origin. In any drawing, you want it to be centered around the origin. It's just a good way of doing your drawings it makes everything more simple and more symmetrical so we're actually going to create center rectangles if you press create go down to rectangle press center rectangle then you can click on your origin and you can stretch out your rectangle so one thing that's good to note off the bat is that you can see that the outline of the rectangle is, has these light blue lines this actually means that your drawing is not constrained and in any drawing you want to make it perfectly constrained because if it's not constrained if you extrude something or you do some some modeling process to your drawing everything might get like twisted and your dimensions might change uh, you might be producing a bunch of errors and that's no fun to go back and try and constrain everything so make sure everything's constrained right off the bat so what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch dimension it's right up here and then we're going to click on one of the lines you drag it out here and we're going to dimension it we're gonna make this side 80 millimeters okay so now you can see that the, these two lines are black that means that the distance uh, has been uh, constrained so if I try and move this line down, click and drag it down, I can't. 
but if I try and click and drag these sides, I still can. They'll still move. So now we have to dimension this, and we're going to make it 180 millimeters. And that looks pretty good. Now you can always change these dimensions. You could always double click on them and change them. So I'm going to say, oh, maybe I want it a little bigger. So I'll make it 90. And you can do this throughout the drawing. These are our base dimensions. So everything we make from now on is going to be based off of these dimensions. So those are the most important ones. So now you can see that these lines are black. You can't move around, click and drag anything around. Everything is fully constrained. So we're going to press finish sketch up here. And now we're going to make this into a solid body. To do this, we press extrude. It automatically selected the profile of our first drawing, and we're going to extrude it 160 millimeters. That looks pretty good. And press OK. You can also turn your origin off now. You don't really need it. So now we can see that we have this big, solid rectangle, rectangular prism. So what we want to do is we actually want to make this hollow. So if you want to make it hollow, uh, one, of the, one of the ways that people would do this is they would create another sketch on this top plane and make a rectangle slightly, slightly less than this one and then extrude it downwards again. Uh, this can get quite tedious and if you decide to change those base dimensions like I was saying, um, what's going to end up happening is that everything is going to look weird after and you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to change a bunch of things. So in order to prevent this, we just, we're just we just going to use this tool that's already here. It's in Modify. It's called Shell. So if you click on that and then you click on your top plane of the rectangular prison or bottom, it doesn't really matter. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to cut everything inside that solid body except for the thickness that you want. So we're going to make this like 8 millimeters thick and look what it's going to do. So basically it cut everything except for 8 millimeter thickness. So like this 8 millimeter thickness, this 8 millimeter thickness all around and even at the bottom there's an 8 millimeter thickness. So that's what the shell tool does. So now we have this basic rectangular prism has a hole in it. So now what we can do is we can make little ledges because we have to put trays inside this thing. We need a tray for uh, to hold the rocks and we also need a tray to hold the actual um, plant that we're growing. So how we're going to do this is we're going to create another sketch. Now we can select a plane on our solid body that we want. You can see the plane is moving around. We're just going to select this top plane. So you click on it. Okay, perfect. So now what we're going to do is that there's kind of just a lot of black lines that we can see on this plane but we don't want to we don't want to see like we want to see all the lines that are on our top plane so what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool called projecting geometry so you can go under create you can go to project slash include and we're going to project this contour you press OK and now the lines will turn purple. So all the lines that are on this plane will be projected in purple as you can see. So now we need to make the ledge we need to actually create a rectangle bigger than this inside rectangle and extrude downwards. Now what will happen if we extrude down, if we make a rectangle and extrude downwards Okay, let's create a rectangle. Okay, let's just let's just make it like this. Cut that whole rectangle part. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make a ledge. We want to make a ledge because there's going to be a tray that holds uh, rocks, and then there's going to be a tray that holds our actual plants. So in order to make this uh, ledge, we have to make another rectangle and then extrude downwards. What will happen if you create just a regular rectangle and you extrude downwards is, like I said before, if you have to change anything, it's going to 
mess up your whole design and it's going to take a really long time to fix. So we're going to use another tool and it's in modify and it's called offset. So with offset you can just click this contour and you can offset it by any amount you want. Okay, as you can see this red line is on the wrong side. So if we click flip here, it'll flip it and we're going to offset it by about two millimeters. Click OK. So now we can finish the sketch and now we can press extrude over here okay, and then click this profile. Okay, so now it wants to extrude upwards. You can, to, to fix this you can just click a negative distance or you can go to cut in operation so we're going to cut it downwards about minus 60. We'll just we'll just gauge if that's enough. It's you can always just drag it down. You can see you can always edit this to however much you want. You know, 80 looks pretty good, so we'll we'll cut it 80. Press okay. And now if you rotate it, you can see you have your little ledge inside, but we still want one more ledge. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another sketch and it's going to be the same procedure. Create another sketch, go to create, project, we're going to project this contour and again we're going to offset this line by negative 2. Cool, so now we're going to finish the sketch extrude, like I said it's the same exact procedure as before and this time we are going to say minus 5 millimeters. So now you can see we've got our basic rectangular prism that didn't take very long it was the most simple part out of our entire assembly and um, yeah so if you want to change anything, like I'm looking at this right now and I'm seeing that this, this ledge is a little bit deep, the one that's going to hold the rocks. So you can always go back in your timeline, which is over here, and it shows you everything you've done. So I can always go back in my timeline. I could go to this extrusion. I could right click and press edit feature. And you can always change the dimension. So I'm going to change it to my 60. And now it looks a little bit better. You can also add things that don't change the dimensions necessarily, but make it a little bit cleaner. So you can always go into Modify, and you can put fillets, which will just round the edges. So you can click all the edges around here, and you can make, say, a 2 millimeter radius uh, fillet if you want. And it'll just round the edges of this rectangle. You can also add... Uh, chamfers and other things. It'll make it a little bit cleaner. Um, and yeah, if you ever want to go and delete something in your timeline, say I don't want the fillets, you can go back and delete. If you want to, if we want to change the base dimensions, you can double click on this in, and you'll go straight to the sketch. Say you want to drastically change this to 120 millimeters and then you press finish sketch the entire thing will change to a more box-like shape. And everything is based off those base design, base, those base dimensions. So anything you change in the timeline, everything will change together. And that's why I designed it the way I did. Because if you just create if you had just created a bunch of rectangles um, with dimensions that you inputted uh, and you wanted to change one of your base dimensions, you'd have to go into each sketch in your timeline and change those as well. So that's why I did, I did this design the way I did. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make a sort of junction box that we can hold all our electronic components. And I'm also going to import some um, parts from our electronic uh, circuit into the drawing so that we can make this design based off of their dimensions. So I'm going to input a Raspberry Pi, a relay, and even um, the breadboard. And we're going to see how it all looks together.